guys and welcome back to another M Crater tutorial. So today you guys wanted the Friday video for explaining how ray tracing works and I will cover that today and hopefully it will open up a little bit more doors for making mods and stuff like that. I've known about it for a while, I've played around with it, um, I've used it in some tutorials but I don't think many people actually know um, the whole extent of what the blocks do and stuff like that. So I'll try to cover the basic stuff today. Um, I'm not sure. I think some stuff has changed since they were added in. So I'll try to clear that up. But um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to cover the different settings. Uh, pretty self-explanatory most of the time in Amp Creator. But uh, let's uh, create a procedure. Uh, we'll just create uh, one to... Uh, we'll just call it um, view or something like that. And then we will go ahead and just change the update tick to, or the uh, trigger, so we can set it to something that will uh, happen every tick so we can test how it works. So I was thinking probably player tick update would probably be the best thing for this example. Uh, you could basically use this in any pretty much procedure as long as it supports um, the entity uh, dependencies unless you're getting something uh, from another block which is the uh, other ones which are get nearest entity you could technically use that as well with this and it wouldn't require the entity tag but um, again that's something for an entire new tutorial all right so there's a few different blocks if you go down to entity um, data and then you scroll down until you get to these blocks right down here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is there is entity looking at block ray tracing distance. Now the distance uh, is uh, based on where it's going to be testing for the um, actual entity location. So if you're looking straight at a sign, then it's going to test five blocks in that direction of the sign. Uh, so whatever direction you're viewing on your pitch and yaw will be these three blocks here. So you're basically getting the Y axis, the X axis, and the Z axis. And this one right here basically allows you to test for a block, um, looking at a block with ray tra tracing. And there's a fluid mode. Uh, this basically has to do with the interaction with fluids. Uh, there's none, so source only, and then any. So any, I think, is for flowing water, and uh, source only is only for basically like source. Now, it's not just for water, it's for any fluid source, obviously, but um, any would include basically flowing materials like liquids and stuff like that where source only would be only for solid water blocks uh the block mode is a little bit different uh there is the visual i'm not sure what visual does collider i would imagine uh has to do with the if you can collide with the block or not uh visual i'm not sure and then there's outline which is generally what you want to use uh for the thing it will just kind of detect where the hitboxes and stuff are uh, and that will generally work I think um, I've always used it on outline and haven't had any issues with it I haven't really played around with the other two but um, you might want to play around with it see what they do uh, the fluid mode is pretty self-explanatory though it's uh, source or flowing and source or none so uh, let's grab that. We'll um, play around with these two blocks today. So we'll go with the other one, which is whoop, entity data, and then we'll scroll all the way down. And then we'll get the X, Y, and Z ones. So these ones are basically going to test for the coordinates of where you're looking at where the other one is basically just testing if you're looking at a block. These ones here are going to test the coordinates where you're looking, which are really handy for a lot of other procedures. I've used them in my lily pad tutorials and water plants and stuff like that. Um, 
because water is really hard to actually place blocks on top of so you can actually use these with the uh, source only and then you can basically get them to be placed down on top of water and stuff like that so they're really handy in that sense I'm going to leave that one out of the procedure for today. Uh, what I am going to do is it's on a player update tick, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically say um, is block. So we're just going to test where the block is. So we want um, operator. We'll just use the X, Y, and Z for our ray tracing. We might want to improve the setup for this by going external inputs so it's like that so we can add them a little bit more cleaner onto these parts right here so basically what this will do is it's going to get the block at and then we're going to test for a ray tracing location so five blocks away from the player on the direction that we're looking at and then we're not going to be testing for a fluid mode for any of them and we're just going to be outlining the actual procedure or the outlining the the block that we're connecting to but we also want to test for the block that we're going to be wanting to test for so in that case what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab a a um, block tag and i'm going to test for grass because grass is pretty common on the surface and stuff and then what we can do is we can actually target that block and uh, we might even want to go ahead and add something to just catch that. So is looking at a block, we don't want a fluid mode, and then we can basically add an and statement. And then what we can do is we can add that onto there. That might also help with some errors too if you're testing for blocks and stuff like that in general you might want to add this just to make sure that they are looking at a block that might help with uh, any errors that you might encounter uh, that's pretty much the same case with the entity nearest entity you have to use this block right here to uh, in order to use the actual entity thing and just make sure that it catches uh, any anything that it basically tries to get out of that loop so there's a problem if it's trying to test for a tenty entity if it's not there it could be very similar with them the manner if there isn't a block there so let's go ahead and then add a event for the thing i want to replace that grass so i'm going to use the ray tracing distance again so we're going to replace it with uh, or X, Y, and Z for the ray tracing. And then I don't really need to keep the state. Uh, the MBT we don't need to keep either. And then we're just going to change that to something a little bit easier to notice. So probably something like, I don't know, uh, um, probably we'll go with an arrow block for now. We can do that and then we'll just leave it as it is so we want to make sure that our ray tracing is set up the same distance as where we're going to be placing it in this case at least uh, you might want to actually offset the coordinates a little bit uh, you could um, in a sense basically go with ray tracing plus and then target your distance for your offset so for example if i wanted to um, test for the block Actually, let's do that instead. So let's test for the ray tracing location and then let's add five um, or add one to the ray tracing location. And then what we can do is we can place an emerald block on top of that block that we're looking at. So that should work. And then what we can do is we can just save that. And every time that we look at a block with a five block radius or distance from the player, that it will should put a emerald block above hopefully that will happen <laughs> i haven't tested this yet but um it should work it should work it's pretty easy compared to the nearest entity for playing around with so we'll just test this out and then we'll go ahead and make any changes that we need to But it's really easy once you actually get to know what it does. Like, for example, like it just goes for the distance of the um, 
where you're viewing, right? So it's a direct line of the path that your X, your yaw and pitch are at. So uh, I want video settings. I'm just going to increase this just a little bit so it's a little bit better for viewing and stuff like that. And clouds, I like clouds on. Should be everything. And then I just want to change the movement controls for auto jump. I never really like that auto jump thing. It uses too much resources when you do that too. All right, so let's create a new game. We'll go in creative. It doesn't matter what game mode you're in. It's just easier to test. And we'll go ahead and just set test. And we want cheats on, create a new world. And then we'll quickly test um, this uh, procedure. Now, there, you could pretty much use this with any block. It's uh, considered as a um, entity tag, but uh, as long as you have entity, you could do ray tracing. So yeah, as you can see, we're basically looking at the block and it's placing the emerald block. Now, if we got really close to it, it might still do it. So it's basically, that would be the colliding mode that we're basically looking at. So anything that we're looking at within a five block radius, it's basically placing it at. Uh, you could do further distance and it would work as well. But uh, as you can see, we're looking way over there and it's not um, basically placing it because it's outside of that five block radius. Now, as we get closer though, with our um, little indicator for our hitbox, as you can see, it starts to um, target the block and stuff like that. So. Uh, it has to be within a very specific range. So when you want to adjust that range, you can basically set the view distance or the ray tracing distance number, and you'll be able to um, go ahead and adjust that. So that's basically what the ray tracing does. Uh, we're not actually placing anything. We're not clicking or anything like that. It's just placing it automatically where we're looking at, which can be used for quite a bit of things if you really wanted it to do specific things for uh, entities and stuff like that. Now you could actually technically do that for any entity. As I said before, um, you could, if you had a entity procedure or something like that, you could basically rather run it from a trigger here. You would basically just make sure that it has an entity, entity tag. Uh, you could, in theory, um, update these. So let's change this a little bit. And we'll go ahead and change a few things. I'm not sure how this will work out. Uh, we want uh, another condition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test for if the entity, uh, does entity exist? And we're going to test for, uh, I don't know. Um, Chicken bats. Not sure if an arrow would do anything. Uh, we could probably try something like ghast or I don't know. Um, I don't know if many actual entities look down often, so it might not be easy to test that but we'll test for a pig within a um from a player so does the entity exist in we'll go 64 blocks of the player and then what we want actually let's increase that to 128 just so it's a little bit easier to test and then what we want to do is we want to basically update any of these variables here so the or not variables, the indicators for the entity. And we're gonna set that as a nearest entity for the uh, thing. So we wanna go ahead and go here, grab this one, set the same rate or the cube distance. Now this could probably be explained in a different tutorial, but um, what I'm basically doing is I'm going to run it from the player update tick find a pig within 120 blocks of the player and then we're going to be running the script instead so i just need to find a pig 
and pigs right there. And then we can basically run this as that. We can even play around with the coordinates on this particular block and make it so it's um, run from ray tracing even. But in our case, we just want to test for the X, Y, and Z. All right, whoops, and go back here, there, and save, and then we can test it in game again. Not sure if this will work or not, but it'll be interesting to find out. It should run it from the pig's point of view, so anything that the pig is looking at, if there is a block within a certain distance, it should put the uh, emerald block, um, one block above that block that it's looking at. And of course, if you wanted to make it a little bit more um, sturdy, what you could do is you could basically go ahead and test if there's air in that location and then make sure that there's a space that it can actually place that block at. And that would probably be more efficient than just basically placing the block. Uh, you could actually grief that way if it wasn't. So uh, just something to keep in mind when you're playing around with things as well. So, All right, so let's go back into single player. We'll try to find a pig uh, or we can even spawn one in. I might want to find somewhere else to do that. We pretty much griefed that entire island that we were on. Okay, so it shouldn't affect us now. Yeah, so it's not affecting us. Uh, let's see if we can't. This is a really bad spawn location, isn't it? <laughs> we should have a few trees. Let's go to this um, island over here. Actually, we could just go to an iceberg. I think it might work better on an iceberg because it's uh, hilly and stuff. So let's go over here and we'll just spawn down a pig. Hopefully the game won't crash. It shouldn't, but anywhere the pig looks. He's looking that way right now. We'll wait until he goes ahead and looks at something should be looking at that so it might not work oh right we need we need grass that's right so we do need to find uh something that has grass on it so we'll go ahead over here place down a pig and we'll see if um we can turn around there he goes he's starting to place it down on the grass now so we just got a couple emerald blocks there now because he's looking directly at the grass block when he walks up to it that's why it's spawning and why he's not basically go ahead and uh spotting anything below so if you wanted to actually place something in front of him you would probably want to test if there was like an air block or something and then test if there's a grass block underneath it and then you could basically place something underneath that where the pig's basically looking because when he's looking this way He's looking directly this way, so right where our cursor is. So he's not actually looking at the block itself until he turns and goes and walks up the block. So that's basically what's going on there. Um, also, that was kind of weird. I guess it's um, because these blocks are here that it's happening. Huh, something interesting. Because the grass just respawned, which was weird. I guess it has to do with the air not being or it not being an air block because the other ones seem fine. But yeah, that's basically the ray tracing is a pretty cool feature to actually use. So I'm sure you can find like a thousand and one different uses for it. But um, I'll say that that's all the time that I have for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.